Have you heard about Will Rogers? He was a legendary comedian in the 1920s and 30s. Around the time of the Great Depression, Rogers had a great one-liner about the economy. He said, invest in inflation. It is the only thing going up. Sad but true. Almost a century later, his joke still makes sense. Inflation is setting records everywhere. I'll begin with some numbers. American inflation is at 8.5%. That's a 40-year high. Canadian inflation is at 6.8%. That's a 31-year high. In Britain, inflation has topped 9%, the highest in 40 years. And here in India, wholesale inflation has reached 15.08%, the highest in nine years. In other words, this is a global cost of living crisis. All over the world, prices are rising. In many countries, the people have started revolting. In Sri Lanka, in Peru, in Argentina, thousands of people are protesting against the rising prices. And when prices rise, stock markets fall. Now take a look at this table. NASDAQ was down 4.7% on Wednesday. FTSE was down 2.3%. India Sensex closed 2.6% in the red. Nikkei was down 1.8%. Germany's DAX closed 1.8% down. This was the worst day for US stocks in two years. Did inflation cause this tumble? Chances are it did. Inflation basically leaves you with less money in hand. For example, assume that you used to pay $1 for a dozen eggs, $1 for 12 eggs. That was before inflation started to bite. Now you're paying $1.5 for the same number of eggs. So that's half a dollar more. Imagine this happening to all your expenditure for fuel, for groceries, for everything. You would be left with less money in your pocket. Or in this case, less money to invest. And without investors, stock markets will plunge. That's one reason. Reason number two is this. Stock prices depend on how companies perform. If inflation is higher, companies lose more money. They have to pay more for fuel, for raw materials. And all of this drains their profits. So stocks go down. Now, for those old enough to remember, these are ominous signs. A lot like 2008, oil prices are rising, stock markets are collapsing, inflation is hitting multi-decade highs. There are, these are classic signs of a recession. The question is, how did we not see it coming? Some factors, in fact, were unpredictable, like Russia's war in Ukraine. Most did not see it coming. Or China's seemingly endless lockdown in Shanghai. But even before that, the signs were there. Let me show you some data from January 2022. It shows the year-on-year -year inflation. Crude oil prices were up 57%. Phosphate up 104%. Soybean 34%. Wheat 29%. Chicken meat 59%. Remember, this data is from January 2022. That's one month before Russia actually invaded. So higher inflation was already on the horizon. Russia's war only made it worse, which brings us to yet another question. If the war did not trigger inflation, what did? Our friend from 2020, the Wuhan virus pandemic. Time for a quick economics lesson. Inflation is all about demand and supply. If the demand is too high, prices will rise. And that's what's happening right now. During the pandemic, everyone held back on spending. Car sales came down, gadget sales plunged, consumer spending was falling every day. Take India, for example. India's consumer spending dropped 10.8% in 2020. In simpler words, people stopped buying stuff. Now, fast forward to 2022. Economies are reopening. The Wuhan virus is almost behind us, so people are back to spending again. India's consumer spending has also recovered. In fact, it is higher than the 2019 levels. Now, usually this is good news for the economy. If people spend more, it means... They're confident in the economy. Things are going well. But this time it's different because supply is not able to keep up. And there's a reason for that. Producers have made very little investments in the last couple of years. Their capacity remains the same. Their inventory has not really changed. So this tsunami of demand has overwhelmed them. And none of this was a surprise, by the way. The data was publicly available. The trend was predictable, yet governments were slow to act. Why? because higher spending benefited them. It gave a positive outlook to the economy. Central banks too must take the blame for this. Their interest hikes came too late. And now they're compensating with back-to-back -back hikes. In other words, more shocks for the stock markets. The good news is that leaders are admitting the problem. They're acknowledging inflation. They're revising growth targets. The bad news is the world is at war.
As long as this war drags on, the world economy will suffer. Two commodities are the worst hit, oil and wheat. Russia and Ukraine are the biggest exporters of wheat in the world. That supply has disappeared since March. And the result is this, a looming food crisis in the global south. We call it food insecurity. Before the pandemic, 135 million people were food insecure. Now that figure is 276 million. 276 million people are food insecure. More than half a million people are experiencing famines. If we don't act now, it could get worse. Tens of millions of people could descend into food insecurity. And to tackle this, UN chief Antonio Guterres is calling for a united front. He's hoping to strike a deal to resume exports from Ukraine. I have been in intense contact on this issue at the senior leadership level with the Russian Federation, Ukraine, Turkey, the United States, the European Union, and several other key countries. I am hopeful, but there is still a long way to go. The complex security, economic, and financial implications require goodwill on all sides for a package deal to be reached. <clears throat> for once, let's hope world leaders pull through because this crisis affects the poorest of the poor. We've talked about complex numbers, complicated economics, but in the end, it really comes down to two things. Do you have food on your table? And how expensive is that food? Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.